comments as we move through the content today. Let us know where you're logging in from and what brings you to Job Club today. We'll get started shortly. Hello and welcome to Job Club. So glad that you've joined us today. For now, locate that, um, that chat box and toggle the two icon from all panelists to all panelists and attendees to ensure we can see your questions and comments as we move through the content today. Go ahead and open up a Word document and minimize it so you can copy and paste re resources out of the chat as we're moving through the content. Let us know where you're logging in from today, what kind of work you're seeking and what brings you to Job Club. Oh, welcome Carol from Lexington. Deb from Roanoke. Oh, it's great to see you in the group. Don from North Georgia. Welcome. So glad that you're here. Oh, welcome Paula from Bowling Green. Tiffany from Lexington. So glad that you can join Job Club today. I'm Amanda. I'm one of the Job Club facilitators and I'll be moderating. We'll get started in just a moment or two. Welcome to those that are just logging in. We're so glad that you're here for Job Club today. Uh, for now, locate that chat icon on the bottom and toggle the two icon from all panelists to all panelists and attendees to ensure we can see your questions and comments as we move through the content today. Uh, recommend that you bring up a Word document so you can copy and paste some of the great content that our speaker is going to present uh, over to Word uh, out of the chat box here. Let us know where you're logging in from and what kind of work you're seeking now. What brings you to Job Club? Welcome, Laura from Athens, Georgia. So glad that you're here. Welcome. We'll get started in about two minutes. Welcome, Peg. Glad to see you in the group as always. Diana's in the chat box moderating. Let us know what kind of work and employment you're seeking. That helps us to know what kind of jobs to, to target to share for our job leads as well. Welcome to those that are just logging in. So glad that you're here for Job Club. I'm Amanda, your moderator today. Locate that chat box and toggle the two icon from all panelists to all panelists and attendees to ensure we can see your questions and comments as we move forward with the content today. Let us know where you're logging in from and what kind of work you're looking for right now. We'll get started in about one minute. Welcome to those that are just logging in. So glad that you've joined for Job Club. I'm Amanda, your moderator today. We're going to get started in a little less than a minute here. For now, locate that chat box and toggle the two icon from all panelists to all panelists and attendees to ensure we can see your questions and comments as we progress through the content today. Let us know where you're logging in from and what kind of work you're looking for. All right, at this time, I'm going to pass it over to Diana to do our welcome. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the first job club in 2021. Um, that's kind of that, that doesn't roll off of my tongue yet, but uh, we're here and we're excited and we are um, hopefully you've seen our our winter spring. Uh, schedule and it is just fabulous. So we hope that you'll take note and be able to join us each and every time. Doc Club's agenda. Um, we have we welcome you and that's what I'm doing right now. We have success stories. Uh, our main speaker, which is the feature of the day, and uh, we'll be sharing some active job leads a little further into the program, uh, partner updates, and then we will uh, be telling you what's going to happen next time at Job Club. Job Club Facilitator, this is the team. I'm Diana Doggett. Um, I'm with Extension. Uh, we have Caroline Francis, Director of Alumni Career Services. Amanda is the Associate Director. And Nicole Wade, who can't be with us today, but she is the Employment Specialist with UK Steps. Uh, shout out to Ellie Goodman, Hannah Sims, and Suzanne Smith. Um, they're always there. They're assisting, and they're great, great uh, partners with the team. Job Club's mission, we do have one and we, uh, uh, we, we honor it. It's to provide a positive environment for job seekers, to network and to learn best practices for the job search. 
We meet on the second and fourth Tuesday of each month, and you can find the schedule of topics at www.ukalumni.net slash job club. Check out again that schedule for our winter and spring, um, and we think you'll be interested in, in attending every one of them. It is tentative, obviously. We are continuing to um, adapt and shift because of, of uh, COVID-19, but we are in Zoom webinar format due to that. Thanks so much, Diana. Caroline's still having some tech trouble, so I'm gonna cover her slides. All right, welcome to our first timers. We're so grateful that you're here. If you're a first timer, feel free to let us know in the chat box. We'd love to welcome you to our group. Um, we do have great resources for you, so we want to make sure that you're aware of resources that the Job Club team has compiled for you. I'm going to copy and paste this content into the chat box right now for you. We've compiled a welcome packet full of great information, staffing agency directory for you, um, articles of interest, Central Kentucky networking uh, opportunities, informational interview tips, definitely check those out. And we're also uh, have a LinkedIn Job Club sharing community. Community. It's, it's pretty common that we meet twice a month for job club, but we'll have job leads that expire before the next job club session. And so we usually will copy and paste those over into that group. So if you're actively job seeking, please join that LinkedIn job club sharing community. You're also welcome to share job leads and job related content on there as well. All right, next slide, success stories. We are always excited to celebrate successes and successes might mean that you got an interview that you got a new job, but it might also mean that you reached out to a networking contact, um, that you reached out for an informational interview, or that you applied to a certain number of jobs in your goal week. So I'll be watching the chat. What are some successes that we've had so far in 2021 uh, related to the job search and how are things going? We'll read a couple of those as we go forward. I'll watch the chat box for us. Watching for some of those to come through here. How about Ellie, we go ahead and go to the next slide and I'll be reading um, Shelly's background while we're watching for those to come through on the chat box. Our speaker for today, and Shelly, you're welcome to come on camera, uh, is Shelly Trent. She's an HR and career development professional who spent her life guiding others towards lifelong learning, career growth, and personal enrichment. Shelley's background includes human resources, college career services, corporate employee career development, and business and industry training. Shelley's certified as a senior professional in the human resources, in human resources by the HR Certification Institute, a SHRM senior certified professional, and also obtained her master's degree in public administration with an emphasis in HR. She completed her PhD coursework at the University of Louisville Human Resources Development and Career Counseling, and she's an adjunct faculty member in the School of Business at Indiana University Southeast Campus, where she teaches business students about career planning, business behaviors, and job search. She's been interviewed and quoted for publications such as Essence Magazine, Workforce Magazine, Pittsburgh Business Times, Kansas City Business Journal, and is a frequent writer and contributor on various HR and career management topics for books, magazines, and other publications. She's a contributing author to anthologies, Humans at Work, and Compassions at Work. A very credentialed and coveted speaker. We're so fortunate to have you, Shelley Trent. Thank you. Well, thank you. You didn't have to read all of that. I'm not too fancy. Oh, no, I'm so proud of you and all your accolades. We're very, very grateful to have you today. Well, thank you very much. So are you going to check with the chat real quick um, to see what people are saying? Or do you want Let's me to go ahead and start? How about we do that real quick, Shelly? It looks like sure. Todd has some phone interviews that are starting to, to pick up, but he's needing some help beating the bots. So I think he's excited for your content. All right, that's the only one that I see in there for now. So I think we're good. You go ahead, Shelly. Thank you. Okay. Uh, if you would go ahead and, and switch the slide for me, that'd be great. 
Okay, so today we're going to talk about how to beat the resume bots. You might have heard of something called the Applicant Tracking System, or ATS. Your competition is not another applicant, it is the ATS. It's about uh, sort of tricks, this, this program is going to be about tricks to get around the ATS or get through the ATS, and hopefully by the end of this you'll have some great ideas on what to do to get your resume into the hounds of a real person. Go ahead. There we go. So I wanted to give you some statistics really quickly. Um, on average, a corporate job posting gets 250 applications. Of those 250 applications, four to six will be contacted for an interview. 95% of large organizations use an ATS for their recruitment process. I would say, you know, regular smaller size organizations, you know, the really small ones probably don't and a lot of nonprofits don't, but anything uh, mid-size and above probably does use an ATS. And big companies like the Humanas and, and those types of organizations receive 50,000 to 75,000 resumes per week, which is why these organizations are using an ATS to sort through all of those bundles of resumes that are coming in and 75% and I think it might be even higher 75% uh, of resumes will never see human eyes or be seen by human eyes go ahead there we go 40% of employers use an ATS. Now, the other one again said 75%, but that's larger organizations, but you won't know if they're using an ATS or not. So you really wanna prepare your resume as if it were going to be seen through an ATS. And the ATS is set up to judge the applicants exactly as to what is listed in the job posting. So that is why it's so important for you when you're writing a resume uh, to write a, a separate specialized resume for each job posting. Because if you send a generic one, and the words from the job posting are not in your resume and cover letter, it will not come through to a person. The ATS is set up to look for things like misspell words and poor grammar and will kick anything out that has errors. And 63% of companies who use an applicant tracking system admit that probably some qualified candidates are filtered out. So that's why you even have to be more diligent about getting those keywords in. And the applicant tracking system only knows to match the words in the posting. So if you use different words or flowery language or something else, it won't understand that. And older tra uh, tracking systems use what we call ocular character recognition or OCR. So if you have things like uh, any graphics, a lot of lines, uh, bullets that aren't just simple bullets, like if you decide to use a check mark or a star, um, it, if it's an older ATS, it won't understand that. It only understands basic text. Um, and some ATSs are set up to just look at the first page. So if you have a lot of information on the second page uh, that matches with the job uh, posting, it might not be seen. So I'll tell you more about how to how to beat those trick or how to do those tricks in a second. Go ahead. As I mentioned, most of the time, a person might not even see your resume until it meets the criteria from the ATS. They rely on that to sort through and pick out the best few. And then a person looks at the ones that the ATS said, these are good. So you want to be sure that you are using the keywords, and I'm sure all of you have heard about keywords. You wanna make sure uh, that you're using those keywords in the resume. And those are in the job description. So carefully, again, uh, check what the, the wording is and use those wordings. Uh, if your resume doesn't have most or all of the words, you might not even get your resume seen by a person. Sometimes they put in a formula and it might say that they require an 85% match before the ATS will you know, kind of spit your resume out on the other end. Uh, so I would recommend not applying for jobs that you don't fully qualify for. So, you know, a lot of times in a job posting, it'll say uh, requirements and 
you know, preferred skills. I would say, unless you have all of the required skills, uh, you know, it takes so long to apply for a job, I wouldn't bother because you might not even get through. I would also recommend a tool that's online. It's called JobScan, and it's jobscan.co, not .com. And this will help you if you cut and paste just the text of the job posting and you cut and paste just the text of your resume, it will tell you the percent match looking for those keywords. So that might help you, you know, if you if you do a job scan and it says you only match 20%, then you have some work to do on your resume to get it up higher. Another thing I will give you a tip on uh, from somebody who has done recruiting and HR her whole career, name your document with your name. So I can't even tell you how many resumes I have received that are just called resume. <laughs> And so when I pull those into my own computer and my hard drive to sort through them, I then have to open each document to see who it's from and rename it with the person's name. So that will be so, so helpful to the HR person if you actually have your document named something like I have here with your name. Thanks. Next. Keep your formatting simple. As I mentioned, the ATS can't really read symbols, lines, logos, pictures, shading, tables, boxes, things like that. Some of them, if they are older, as I mentioned, they're only set up to read um, the words. And so if you have a lot of fancy formatting, you know, headers and footers, things like that, the ATS may not be able to read them. I would also say don't use a template. Uh, some ATSs can't read that as well. Now, I know you want your resume to look really pretty. So here is an option for you. When you're filling out the online application, you can put in your basic uh, resume that the ATS can read. Sometimes it gives you the option to upload multiple documents. Then you can upload your nice looking resume in a PDF uh, so that you know, they, they can see both. They can see your beautiful resume that you've worked so hard on and they can uh, see the, just the basic text from the, the one that you'll send through the ATS. You want to include only the usual sections of a resume. So, so thinking of experience, education, skills. If you have headings that have uh, a not very usual or customary heading, the ATS might not be able to read those things like affiliations. And again, some ATS programs can't read a PDF, which is why I say send your, your resume in Word. And if you have space for extra attachments, then you can send a PDF of your attractive resume uh, so that whoever sees it on the other end will have both. Uh, again, it must be very simple or it will lose formatting. Uh, pretty much uh, an ATS will convert it to a text file. Um, and this is what the ATS will see. Again, when you're looking at the online application, it usually will tell you whether it accepts a PDF or a doc, docx, etc. So if you upload what it says to upload, you should be fine. Go ahead. So you might have heard of different types of fonts called serif and sans serif. It's harder for an ATS to read a font with a serif. And those are the ones with the little kind of curls or edges on the letters like Cambria, Century, Georgia, and Times New Roman. So it's best to use a sans serif font, which is very simple to read. It doesn't have the little curly cues. And those would be things like Arial, Calibri, Gadugi, and Roboto. I would stick with probably Arial or Calibri just because most people's computers uh, have those uh, fonts available. They might not have Gadugi and Roboto. Go ahead. Again, I mentioned uh, you might only apply for jobs where you meet 85% or more of the requirements in the posting. Your resume not, might not even be pulled unless you meet 100%. So again, use JobScan to try to figure out kind of where you are in that percentage match. I would also say, uh, we don't use objective statements anymore. We prefer a headline. So instead of saying, 
um, seeking a, a human resources professional position, blah, 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 you would just say HR professional at the top or human resources professional or IT uh, and security professional, something like that. So you want a headline that's just, this is what who I am, this is what I do. And then maybe a summary statement below that, that defines your area of expertise and how it matches the position. But again, you want your resume to be specifically tailored for each position. I know that's a lot of work, but that's the best way to get through the ATS. And in your experience section, you wanna focus on where you were promoted, the results that you contributed, and not responsibilities and tasks. That's a whole other presentation about accomplishment statements, but I do have a few slides on that in this program. Next. So here's some more tricks uh, or tips maybe. The acronym and any spelled out form, uh, the first time you use an acronym, you wanna spell it out. So uh, for instance, applicant tracking system, and then in parentheses, ATS. So if you're doing that on a resume, don't assume that the ATS is going to know what these things stand for. Even things like CPA, MBA, if, if the job posting says MBA, it's probably going to be set up to notice MBA. If it says Master of Business Administration, it might not be set up to understand MBA. So you wanna be sure that you always put both the full spelled out words and the abbreviations because the, you're not sure uh, which one the ATS is set to do, uh, but you can look at the job description and try to figure that out, but I would always do both. And don't just put keywords at the top of your resume. I've seen a lot of people do that. They look at the keywords and they just have bullet points across the top of their resume. The ATS is sophisticated enough to know that you're just giving them a list of words and it wants to see the words throughout your resume in your accomplishment statements and uh, throughout uh, your, your bullet points. I, get, uh, I mentioned using an, uh, a headline at the top and not an objective statement. So things like financial analyst, human resources professional, sales associate, or marketing and communications manager. So those are the things you wanna put as your, as your uh, headline. Next one. So let's look at this uh, example. So you can see, and I, I just made this up. So job requirements that are listed in an advertisement. I'm also gonna tell you how to uh, bring a little wow factor. So the job requirement says two years experience in marketing. And please do note that years has an apostrophe after it, unless you say uh, years of experience. So if you say two years experience, you need that apostrophe. Uh, so two years experience in marketing, create mail promotions, develop brochures, reach target, research target audiences, analyze sales figures, maintain database of customers and take calls from customers and resolve issues. So those are the requirements listed in the ad. If you go to the next one. So your resume says very simply, two years experience in retail and restaurants, typed letters to send to clients, helped with the newsletter to mail to our customers, performed data entry to maintain a client list, created flyers about our products, attended and took meetings of uh, minutes of sales meetings. And that again, we talked about accomplishment statements. So that is just a list of duties. You wanna give it some punch by adding those accomplishment statements. So if you think as you're writing about the who, what, when, where, why, how, how much, how many, all of those things added to your uh, list of duties makes it more of an accomplishment statement. So let's take a look here. Two years experience in the retail and restaurant industries, resolving customer issues. Produced company newsletter on our products and services that was sent to 10,000 customers per quarter. Maintained client list of over 50,000 in database. Ensured contact information was consistently updated. Merged mailing list into our database. Promoted company products through creation of four marketing pieces per month. Attended sales and marketing staff meetings and gained knowledge of analyzing sales figures. You're not lying on your resume um, just because you use better terminology. So instead of listing duties, 
think about how to, to answer those questions that I mentioned. Uh, go ahead, next one. Here we go. I'm having a long delay with the slides changing, so sorry if, if you all are seeing them before I am. So again, I mentioned the ATS is set up to know when words are misspelled or typos. And so you have to be very careful. Of course, use your uh, spell check on your computer, but maybe have two or three other people review it to make sure that you don't have any errors. And again, the ATS is only going to look for what it's been told to look for, basically the, from the job description. And so you have to really be careful to match those. I wanted to also share with you, I mentioned the MBA versus Master of Business Administration, but some ATSs can't distinguish between things like front end with a hyphen and front end without a hyphen. And so pay attention to how things are worded or written in the job posting. Hopefully they won't have typos in the job posting. <laughs> and some, companies use different titles for things. And so your, your uh, past jobs might have been called program manager, but they're looking for uh, project manager. So what you can do here is uh, put your program manager title and then maybe in parentheses put project manager or program manager slash project manager. Because if you, let's just say if you, and I think I have a slide on this, but if you have uh, your role was consultant, but you really did other things besides just being a consultant, I would list those titles in parentheses or something so that if the ATS is looking for a job title that's something else, uh, then you have, you're covered with the titles that it's seeking. Uh, go ahead to the next one. You also want to use bullet points and action verbs. You don't want to say anything like I, me, my, mine, my responsibilities included. You want everything to start with a, a bullet and an action verb. And you want to be careful not to use the same action verbs over and over. So you wouldn't say developed, developed, created, created, managed, managed throughout. You want to use a different word. And there are many sites that offer you lists and lists of different action verbs. And so one of them is on the ladders.com. Um, I think I have a link to another one on the next one. Uh, and again, you don't want to use anything like a star or a check mark or a symbol. You just want to use very simple bullets. Go ahead to the next one. Here's another uh, link to a place that has some wonderful action verbs. It's on the muse. And uh, this is a place that you can uh, click and get a, a long list of the action verbs you can use on your resume so you don't start the same one uh, or align with the same one twice. Use short phrases or sentences with bullet points. Be uh, succinct in your language. Don't have a lot of flowery language or unnecessary words because again, you want the job or the, your resume to follow the job description. And of course, absolutely free from any typographical punctuation er errors. And like I said, don't use I, me, my, mine, responsibilities included, uh, just the action verbs. Go ahead. Liz Ryan is a well-known career blogger. I read her columns all the time. And she says, these are 10 boiler prep boilerplate phrases that kill resumes. So you want to be careful not to use these types of phrases. Results-oriented professional, uh, cross-functional teams, superior communication skills, strong work ethic, met or exceeded expectations, team player. The reason this these don't matter is that anyone can say them. You need to prove it on your resume, how you were these things. And so if you say I'm a team player, it would be better to give a description of a time when you were on a team and the outcomes that your team uh, was able to make. So maybe you were given a project and you your team finished it a week early and uh, you got a new account because of that. So you want to prove these things on your resume and not just use these words you know, kind of throw them out and see if they stick. Um, Brad Karsh is another author I would recommend for you. And he has a book called Confessions of a Recruiting Director. And it's one of my favorite books. 
he's a friend of mine and um, it's fabulous. I use it in my classes. And again, he says, anyone can write that I'm a hard worker, but that's worthless because you have to prove it in the statements in your resume. Go ahead to the next one. Say what? 50% of resumes are never read. So I know that's a very disheartening statement, but it's true. And you have fewer than 10 seconds to impress the reader, usually an HR professional recruiter. Uh, some people say six seconds. So that's why you want to have everything uh, on your resume easy to read, easy to scan. Typically, they're quickly looking for job titles, companies where you've worked, your start and end dates to make sure you're not just staying someplace six months and leaving and your education. Uh, some quotes that I wanted to share with you. The resumes that caught my attention were ones with specific measures of success. And again, that goes to those accomplishment statements. And it's a highly subjective process. So I advise people to be clear, concise, organized, and put the most important stuff on the top of their resume where the reader can find it. Next slide. We're going to talk about that as well in a minute, the, the funnel uh, of a resume. So again, I wanted to share just a few examples of accomplishment statements to help you because this is the hardest thing uh, people say about writing a resume is doing accomplishment statements. It does not mean uh, an accomplishment doesn't mean that you've won awards necessarily, you've been the employee of a month, whatever that means. Um, it means to quantify or qualify statements in your resume. So let's Take a look here. A poor example would be provided excellent customer service. Because as I said earlier, anybody can say that, but you have to prove it. So let's just look down to the best one. Recognized by supervisor for tactful dealings with difficult customers, received award for having the highest customer satisfaction rating for the quarter. Next one. A poor one would be trained employees. A better one, or let's just go to the best, developed customer service training program and presented it to 100 staff members over a six month period, resulting in a 110% increase in customer satisfaction levels. And you're not really saying you, you won an award necessarily, you're just giving data of how, again, that who, what, why, where, how, how many, how much, those types of things. Go ahead. Another one, uh, taught self and others to use QuickBooks and set up first computer-based bookkeeping system for, for small business with over 300 accounts. Next. So in each job, think about what you did to set yourself apart. How did you do the job better than your coworkers? What did you do to make it your own? What special things did you do that your boss recognized? Think about excuse me, think about when you had your performance review. What were the good things your boss said in the performance review? What things did you get complimented by from your coworkers or people you worked with uh, or supervisors or people maybe even in another organization who you had a relationship with? Think about all of those things. And again, uh, the, the who, what, why, where, I have a list there to help you think about as you're writing every statement of your resume that if you can put any of this information in there, it will help you. How did you make money, save money, save time, make work easier for yourself and others, solve problems, make your company more competitive, build relationships with others, expand the business, attract new customers, or retain existing customers. And there are many, many more, uh, but these are some ideas to get you thinking about accomplishments. Go ahead. So this might sound a little, um, I don't know, negative in a way, but a resume is really something that's used for you to sell yourself as a product for a company to purchase pay you basically. So it really is an advertisement about yourself. A lot of people say, well, I don't feel comfortable bragging on my resume. Well, that's the place to brag. This is the place you want to be very targeted to the, the position you want. You want to address the specific needs of the employer and it should be a marketing tool for you. 
And again, I mentioned creating a different one for every position you are applying for. Next one. One page resumes are preferred for most entry level positions and uh, without a lot of experience, two pages are acceptable if the information on both of the pages is relevant to the job posting. Uh, you want to highlight the skills and accomplishments that you have that meet the employer's requirements and preferences. You want to exclude irrelevant information. So let me give you an example of that. Before I worked in human resources, I worked in law enforcement. And so when I made the transition, I didn't put all of my law enforcement background on my resume because you know what, they didn't care. They, you know, employers don't really care what you did in the past unless it's something they want you to do in this job that you're applying for. So if you're putting every duty you've ever done in every job you've ever done, stop doing that. You only want to list the duties and experiences that relate to the job you are applying for. And that will help you not have a six page or a four page resume. You can condense it a lot because you're not putting all of this other information on your resume. You want to be very succinct and only focus on what they want from you. Go ahead. So this is the funnel I talked about where you're you might have remembered that I said in ATS sometimes it's only programmed to look at the first page, but no matter what you do, you want to put the most important information from the job posting at the top of your resume, secondary information next, and then other information at the bottom. So let me give you an example of that. Many years ago, uh, an HR person asked me to take a look at his resume. He had been applying for jobs for months and had never heard anything back. So he sent me his resume and the top of it, he didn't have a headline that said HR professional. Uh, he didn't have information at the top that related to what he was looking for. The top of his resume, his current job was soccer coach. And I said, if I were looking at this, I would, probably not read any further. I would say, soccer coach, how did this get into this pile for HR? I would put it aside. He should have said HR professional as a headline. He could have said something that uh, in his summary statement that he was seeking to return to the HR profession. Um, he could have put his relevant experience at the top and his education at the top because he had a degree in HR but he didn't, he used the soccer coach job. So you can redo your resume so you can have rele relevant experience at the top that matches the job posting and then other experience at the bottom if there's something that you want to highlight. Sometimes what I do is if the job posting says that there are three main things that they're looking for, I will make a bullet or um, uh, a heading and put the stuff uh, on my resume, you know, if it says communication, public speaking, this or that, I'll put my bullets at the top with those things that they're seeking and then just put at the bottom uh, my dates and, and titles. So I'm not putting everything under, you know, it wouldn't have to be soccer coach is my, my most recent job. I can put the HR experience and then the soccer stuff at the bottom or even just leave it off uh, unless you're worried about having uh, uh, an employment gap. But, but again, you can just put that in there as the dates and the title and focus on the most important stuff first because that's what they're gonna pay attention to is what's at the top of the page. Next one. As we said on the first couple of slides, recruiters see, receive hundreds of resumes for every posting. They're looking for easy ways to weed people out. So if you have a typo or if you aren't qualified meeting every requirement in the ad, you, you probably won't get your resume seen. So the, the best way, and you know we're doing a program on how to get around the ATS. The best way to get around the ATS is to know someone on the inside. Uh, what I say is that if you're on LinkedIn, and I hope you have a LinkedIn profile and that you have a very robust LinkedIn profile, 
uh, you might have a friend or someone who works at the company you're connected with. Even if you don't know the person really well, maybe you've, you're, it's an acquaintance from a meeting you've attended. It's always nice to contact somebody who you know on the inside and say, you know, I just applied for a job at University of Kentucky. And if you know anybody in the HR department, will you put in a good word for me? And that's okay. That's what LinkedIn is for, is for us to make professional connections. Uh, go ahead. I found this on the site that I wanted to share with you as well. More than 90% of employers are looking on social media for new talent. Now, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but most of or a lot of LinkedIn's revenue comes from recruiters who pay to be able to do specialized searches on LinkedIn. I can tell you from my point of view and my husband's point of view, he's been an IT recruiter. Many jobs aren't posted at all. There, uh, a recruiter will go on LinkedIn and will search for the keywords and maybe a location, maybe job titles, whatever, uh, the degree, we will search and we will contact people on LinkedIn asking them, we have a job opening, would you be interested in talking with us about it? The jobs aren't posted. People search on LinkedIn to save time. It's easier to look at somebody's LinkedIn profile and decide if you wanna to talk to them than it is to take in two or 300 resumes. So if you don't have a good LinkedIn profile, I suggest you get on that. You should spend just as much time on LinkedIn as you do up updating your resume. Uh, your, your LinkedIn profile is a wonderful tool because not only can you have everything from your resume, but you can have a lot more information than what's on your resume. So you don't have to have a three-page resume. You can have a two-page resume and put all the other information on LinkedIn. 73% of recruiters have hired someone who was introduced to them on social media. So I suggest that you, you, you make as many connections on LinkedIn as you can. That's a whole other presentation, but I just wanted to throw that out there. Go ahead to the next one. A little bit ago, I talked about proof in your accomplishments. So I wanted to go into that a little bit further. In your employment experience, they want to see proof on your resume that you have these skills, leadership, communication, organization, problem solving, teamwork, creativity, and technical skills. So you, you wouldn't just say, I have excellent communication skills. You might give an example of times when you've had to do a lot of public presentations or you've had to prepare and deliver presentations to the C-suite or that you've used your communication skills in dealing with difficult customers, whatever it is, you wanna give examples of times when you've used these skills rather than just saying you have them. Go ahead and go to the next one. So here's another thing to help you get around things in the ATS. If the posting requires 10 years of experience in accounting and your resume shows that you have five in accounting and five in bookkeeping, the ATS will not see that you have 10 years in accounting, which is why I mentioned earlier about using words um, sort of that mean either one. So you might say bookkeeping and accounting in your job description for that job rather than just bookkeeper. Uh, if that's the title, maybe your, your title at this job is accountant and your last title was bookkeeping, you wanna make sure that you use the words uh, accounting and accounts or whatever it is in that uh, section of your resume. If you also use the same words over and over, uh, the ATS might assume that you're using the same words to trick it. I know that sounds crazy. Uh, so you wanna change up your, your language a little bit. Use the key words, yes, but also use other words um, that mean the same thing. Tweak your titles if necessary. I mentioned this a minute ago. If the posting says you need 12 years as a consultant, but your job titles have been advisor, counselor, specialist, change the titles to advisor and consultant, specialist and consultant, et cetera. It's not really lying. You're just giving another uh, way to of what your title could have been. Like I mentioned earlier, program manager versus project manager. You can put program and project. Go ahead to the next one. 
Again, you want to start with your most recent experience if you're doing chronological format, and that would include the title held, the organization's name, the city and the state. If it's not clear from the company name what type of industry it is, you might want to put a little phrase in there about what kind of a company it is. And again, I mentioned earlier, don't abbreviate things without spelling it out and then abbreviating it. <clears throat> Excuse me. You want to put the dates that you held the position. If you've held several positions with one employer, you can list the employer only once. And if you were promoted, you want to say promoted to this job from, you know, after two years in this position. You want to list your responsibilities in order of the uh how it matches up with the job you're applying for. So if, if the top thing listed in the job posting is X, but you have X on as the 10th line, move it up to the top line. So you kind of want to do that in order of how it's listed in the job posting, because that's probably listed in order of importance to what the employer is asking for. Next one. For contact information, I've been seeing this a lot lately. It's no longer necessary for you to put your street address. It's no one's business where you live. Uh, all you need to do is maybe put the Washington DC area or the Louisville, Kentucky area or Lexington, Kentucky area uh, because they don't need a street address. You can of course put a telephone number where you can be reached during the day, but do not list your work number or your work email address. That's against the rules. <laughs> Make sure your email address is professional. Maybe you have a Gmail account just for your job search and it would be something like shelly.trent at gmail.com or something like that. You don't wanna have anything funny, um, you know, mom of six or soccer mom or band mom or a tattoo man or a dog lover. None of that is acceptable for you to use on a resume. Go ahead to the next one. Also, I will say, um, watch out for capitalizing words that don't need to be capitalized. Things like bachelor's degree, finance course. Um, these things are correct when you're actually stating the correct title of something. Um, so I hold a bachelor of science degree in business is a formal title. So that is what you would put at, um, capitalized. If you say I took classes in accounting, business and communications, those are not the official names of classes so they would not be uh, capitalized. Uh, I work in human resources and training. Again, those are not official job titles, so it's not capitalized. His job title is chief financial officer, would be capitalized uh, because it is an official title. So you can easily look up the capitalization um, online, uh, but a lot of people capitalized un capitalize unnecessary words on their resume, and that's considered a typo. Go ahead to the next one. Don't put the word resume on the top of it. It's obvious what it is by looking at it. Don't put any photographs or logos. Don't put any personal information on it. I, I think a lot of us who are older, you know, back in probably the 80s, that was something that you were supposed to put on there. You were supposed to put down hobbies and your health and things like that. But don't put anything personal uh, about your age, your religion, your health, your children, anything like that. Also, I would say it's okay for those of you who are over 40, it's okay to leave off information from your resume like dates that you graduated because they can figure out how old you are if you put what year you graduated from college. Also, you don't have to go back any further than 10 to 15 years of work experience on a resume. So you don't wanna go back 25 or 30 years because again, they can figure out how old you are from that information. You don't wanna list your reasons for leaving, you don't wanna put your salary history in your resume. You don't wanna use a lot of different font, font, uh, font styles and, and again, underlines and things like that. And you don't want to uh, list any thing like churches, your political affiliations, et cetera. Go ahead to the next one. You want to, uh, when you're filling out the online application, you want to follow the directions to the letter. If there are blanks for things to be filled in and you skip them, you probably will not be seen by a human uh, person to look at them. They'll be thrown out of the ATS. Don't leave any blank fields. 
if the application requires a typed response in a box and they have space for you to put 5,000 characters, it's likely that they assume that you're going to put a longer response in the box. If it only gives you 100 characters, the opposite is true. They, they are expecting a response for probably as many characters as it offers you. Federal resumes are this way for sure. You know, you might think I'm just going to put in my bullets of my job duties and things, but they give you this much space in a federal resume and they want you to use all that space. Keep information on all of your former employers, their phone numbers, their street addresses, your supervisor's name, your exact dates of employment. Keep this information handy. Here's why I say that. I knew somebody in college who uh, he had worked seasonally for Dollar General loading trucks and he was looking for a, a professional job. He'd already had a professional job and he guessed when he filled out the online application, he just guessed at the dates. He didn't know for sure. So, you know, he might have put May 1st whatever through September 1st, but the actual date might have been May 20th through August 30th. Well, they checked with Dollar General to see what dates of employment he really had. They told him when he didn't get the job that he'd lied on his application by putting the wrong dates of employment. So you wanna be sure or as sure as possible about your dates of employment when you put them on the job posting. I mean, in the, in the application. So be careful with that. It might not happen with, with every ATS, but I know what happened with my friend. Don't lie on an application. Maybe you are one credit hour short of having a degree and you put on there that you have a degree. Well, if they find out later that you didn't have a degree, you can be fired for lying on your application. Ensure that the formatting on your app, on your online application is tidy. What happens typically is that the ATS will pull data from the resume you upload into fields. And if you just assume that it pulled it into the right fields, you're probably wrong because it probably pulled weird information into the fields. And maybe even when you put bullet points, it has some weird character like an ampersand or, a, you know, whatever exclamation point. You want to go through that application and make sure that what the ATS pulled into those fields is correct and is formatted nicely. And uh, if they give you space to upload a cover letter, absolutely upload a cover letter and you want it to be, and that's a whole other presentation, but you want it to be very specific to the job posting, not just as, as you can see on the enclosed resume, blah, blah, blah. You want to outline in the cover letter why you meet all of their requirements. Um, again, if they only allow you to upload one document, make page one the cover letter, page two and three the resume. Go ahead. Have your cover letter and resume ready to submit before you start completing the online application because many of them time out. It might be you think it's only going to take you 20 minutes to get everything ready and then you decide to redo your cover letter and then it times out and you have to start over. Uh, so that's just a tip. Have at least three references that you've already asked permission to use because a lot of times these online applications will say please list three references and you're gonna need their full contact information, how you know them, whatever, their job title, you're gonna to have to have that. So get that ahead of time and get permission to use them as a reference. I already mentioned, you know, saving your resume with your name. Uh, and again, I, I mentioned this as well, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. The ATS pulls information that goes to HR from the boxes you fill in on the application. So they might not see your actual resume, they'll see the text that the ATS has pulled into a format that they print out. So pay attention to that form. Next one. Uh, just a few other tips I wanted to share. I already talked about a couple of these. Always send a cover letter that talks about how you are uniquely qualified for that position and not just a short paragraph that says, as you can see on the enclosed resume. You want to use a formal cover letter style uh, with your contact information at the top. You know, look online for how to write a formal business letter. 
we talked about a LinkedIn profile. Many candidates or many employers look there and they don't post jobs. Uh, have your LinkedIn profile on your resume, but make sure it's a web address because I've noticed lately with updates to, I guess it's Google or something. Sometimes when I go to a LinkedIn profile or any website, instead of giving me the HTTP blah, 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 it just it says like Shelly's LinkedIn or, or whatever. So make sure it's an actual HTTP address so that if they don't have a live link to your resume, it's going to be something they can type into the bar. Clean up your social media because employers look at your Facebook as well. And if it's not private, if it's just open to the public and you have strange things on there or parties and drinking or whatever it is, that's not going to look good for you. Um, keep track of the applications that you uh, apply for or put in because if they maybe you've applied for seven jobs in a week, and somebody contacts you and you don't remember which job that was, it's going to make you look unorganized. So make sure you're keeping track of who you've applied to, keep your resumes out maybe in a file folder that uh, or something like that that you can easily access. And I would say not to use the easy apply or click to apply features. I know LinkedIn has that where they just send your LinkedIn information to the employer. I would not do that. I would send a well thought out cover letter and application, uh, fill out everything formally uh, to make sure that it's seen by a person. Next one. I see we have a lot of questions here. So I'm going to let uh, Amanda tell me, I've, I've seen questions popping up, popping up. Some of the questions I answered earlier in the program, I guess some <laughs> folks came in a little late. So go ahead and let me know what those questions are. All right, you ready for a lightning round? Sure. Looks like I've got five or six for you. First okay. one, how do I handle explaining what I've been doing if I don't put all of my past jobs on that resume? If what I said about that was if your past jobs relate to what you're going to be doing, you can list them. I wouldn't go back further than 15 years. And maybe what you can do is put um, relevant experience again, uh, listing the duties that you've had in past jobs. And then at the bottom, you can just put your dates of employment and things like that. And they don't have to know that your relevant experience, if you're just bullet pointing my communication skills, my public speaking skills, my customer service skills, whatever it is, they don't have to know what job that came from. So you can just put you know, your dates of employment and your titles at the bottom and you don't have to match up what goes with what job. Great advice. I'm gonna combine two questions here. It's related to career change in the resume. How can you address the skills that you need to get past the ATS as a career changer? By using transferable skills. So if the, if the job posting uh, requires, let me think of an example here. Um, We'll kind of go back to the accounting and bookkeeping. If it requires that you have been an accountant and you've only been a, a bookkeeper, you can sort of double up those words. Say, I did accounting and bookkeeping, even though it was only bookkeeping, it, you know, it kind of comes out in the wash. Um, or like I did, uh, my own example, when I transferred or changed over from law enforcement to HR, I left off all the duties I did in, in law enforcement that weren't related to HR. I only focused on things that related. So I talked about helping the parolees get a job, helping them go back to school, record keeping, confidentiality. So I only focused on the duties that were transferable to the new career. Excellent. Um, given the recommendations here, do you recommend a service like Top Resume, asking since each application gets its own resume? Say that again? I think it's asking if you would recommend a service like Top Resume, a, a resume writing service. Um, yeah, if, if you feel like you're, you're not able to do that you can have somebody I do that for people all the time I help people write resumes or, or I proofread them or whatever and help them so that the resume matches the job posting but again you need a new one for everyone so it's kind of hard if you just get top resume or some resume writer to do a generic resume it's not going to serve you well because you need to have a, a, an updated resume for every job so that's a yes and no I see a few more coming in. If they're easy, quick questions, I'm going to answer them in the chat. Okay. Um, can, the a 
<laughs> we'll get you through it, I promise, Shelly. Can the ATS access the metadata from the Word document as it's scanning it? I think it's more about how does the ATS work? Yeah, and I think so. And I heard somebody the other day telling me that they had heard about a trick where uh, they put a bunch of words in and they were invisible, like they put in things behind the text or in a header or something that were just a list of keywords. I wouldn't do that because that's, you know, if, if they see what you've done, that's sort of seen as cheating. Um, I don't know if that's the answer they're looking for, but people can contact me if they have direct questions. My email is on the account or on the page. Excellent. Excellent. Um, let's see. Here. I saw something about contact information. I mentioned yes. that you don't have to put your address. Just put your name, your email address, and your phone number and your LinkedIn link. Your Even on the cover letter, is that okay? Yes, and okay. and the city state's fine. These days, a lot of things are remote, but you know, Lexington, Kentucky area, Louisville, Kentucky area, that's fine. Two more questions. I get conflicting information about graduation dates and old jobs. I'm in the medical field, uh, thirty years of experience. What should I do? Well, I also saw somebody had put down there about um, listing dates and can they ask me for my graduation dates on the ATS. The sad thing is that even though it's illegal for HR people to discriminate against you for being a certain age, they still ask for dates on the ATS. I think that's bad practice, but some of them do. They'll ask for your date of graduation. They'll ask for your uh, dates of employment back to whenever. Um, you have to put them in if they ask for them. Yes. Hopefully they're not going to use them to discriminate, but you don't want to leave any fields blank. Uh, you know, going back as far as you can for nursing, maybe the job you had 20 years ago is the most related to what you want to do. So you have to sort of weigh uh, the good and the bad and, and decide for yourself if, if it's worth it to put something that old. Um, and again, maybe in nursing, the more experience you have, the better it is. But in some fields, it's experience is always good, but age is a problem. I'm doing a presentation uh, next month on ageism because it is a thing. Where's that presentation at, Shelly? We want to we wanna log in and listen too. It's actually through the uh, Northern Kentucky uh accountability, accountability group? group yes yeah that's we awesome on ageism so the so the northern kentucky accountability group for those that are listening in is another job club similar structure to us um that's out of northern kentucky the kenton county library fantastic yeah. resource all right that actually addressed the other question too so okay. at this point at this time i'd love to fill that chat box with gratitude for our speaker shelly as we're transitioning over to our next part of the program we're going to talk about active job leads next shelly we can't thank you enough we know you have another meeting to get to um, but we're so so grateful for your time and expertise thank you so much you're welcome and my email address is on the screen i'm happy to answer additional questions if needed you're getting lots of love in the chat box. Thank you oh, so thanks. very much. Okay, bye everybody. All right, Diana, we're ready for your next step in the program. Thanks so much, Shelly. Um, my head is just spinning. <laughs> I'm taking notes, I'm writing on my, on my Word document and just a lot of useful information there that were personal and that we can share. So thank you again. Uh, this is the time for um, attendees to share job leads and job uh, targets via our uh, chat box. So um, we'd love for you to utilize that right now. If you are an employer with an active job lead, click uh, your raised hand function and we can allow you to announce that um, uh, uh, publicly. So uh, either way works and we'd love to see some, some um, jobs listed here that we can share with our audience. I think we had uh, someone that was going to have to leave earlier. And she, um, this is Andrea Murray, and uh, she has a tax compliance supervisor position and uh, it's open in the accounting department. So um, she listed that in the chat box. Um, she has, has the, uh, uh, the contact information, the website there, um, and it's with the Eastern Kentucky uh, Cooperative. Uh, work site. So you might check that one out by Andrea Murray. Okay, let's slip on down. We're still getting lots of uh, accolades for this, this program and we, we appreciate you 
you sharing your appreciation. All right, so any other job leads that someone would like to share that they're aware of? I might mention that um, if you do have a job lead, uh, please send that to us by 12 noon today. And uh, the address is on your screen, UK alumni career at uky.edu. And we will include those in our post meeting job lead list. So those are very helpful for you to review later, to take, uh, to do some research, take action. So please email those to us by noon today. Not seeing any other, so we'll move on to good news. Um, our partners always share what's going on within their organizations and I'm representing Extension. So I first and foremost uh, want to invite all of you to check out your local Extension office uh, in your county. All 120 counties have an office. Go to their website. Um, there are Facebook pages. There are lot, There is lots of information for you to, to view and to participate programs. So uh, we, we encourage you to do that. Um, I'm gonna mention a couple that I'm engaged in. And um, currently, and I, I had, uh, had already put that on, but I'll just do that again. Let's see, flip to the next, yeah, there we go. Um, so I'm, I'm doing a program now, it is called Kit Kentucky Cancer. And, uh, you know, it, are you or a loved one um, dealing with uh, can, uh, uh, treatment or remission? And uh, if you are, then hopefully um, this program could be for you. Um, we have several sessions, but it, it's all about the physical and emotional health uh, support that uh, you or your loved ones may need. So just take a look at those dates. We'd love to have you participate. Um, we're doing this across the state, and I think you would benefit greatly uh, if this is something that you are dealing with with this uh, uh, this disease that can be ravaging. Um, I also want to um, mention one other program, and uh, it's Cooking Together, and I'm doing this the first Wednesday of every month. Um, it's a fun, fun session. We we had our first one last last week. And uh, you can either cook along, you get a list of ingredients when you register, or you can just watch for fun and participate in the, in the dialogue. So uh, next session is February 3rd, and uh, we sing out a food list. So uh, if that's something you're interested in, then join me with the Let's Cook Together program. Again, check out your local extension office for uh, programs in, in 4-H youth development, in agriculture, natural resources, horticulture, community development, and more. Thanks so much, Diana. All right, next up, quick updates from Alumni Career Services at UK. Um, my name is Amanda. I'm the Associate Director for Alumni Career Services. If you're interested in career counseling services, anyone can join the Alumni Association to be a life or active member. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. I just put my email in the chat. We do have some programs coming up soon that I want to make you aware of. I just put that information in the chat as well. Um, next Wednesday, we're having a webinar that's free and open to the public career management webinar series, setting up your remote office. So We'll have a, a, a fellow talking about ergonomics and how to set up your remote office if you're working from your couch right now, if you're working from your kitchen counter, how to avoid a back pinch. Uh, that can be really helpful. Registration is going to open soon for our Clifton Strengths Assessment Workshop. This filled in three days when we offered it in October via Zoom. So if you're interested in that, please watch the registration page uh, for that to come out soon. Should be coming out in the next couple of days. And then um, February the 17th, next month, our career management webinar series, the resignation process, practical tips for job transition. Registration's open for that right now. Um, next slide for me, Ellie. Um, our partner from UK Steps is out today, so I'm gonna do her update briefly. Uh, for those of you that are seeking employment at the University of Kentucky, UK Steps temporary employment is a great place to start your career at UK. I started my career at UK in Steps. Um, great opportunities on there. I just copied and pasted the link to that job board into the chat box, but a great way to get connected and we'd love to see you join the UK team. 
All right, last slide. Next time at Job Club, we are so excited to host Chris Bollinger uh, for the economic outlook. Looking back, looking out, and looking up, impacts of COVID-19 on the economy have been so interesting. I watched him do a 1.0 version of this talk uh, a couple of months ago, and he's going to update that data for us uh, for our next session. So that'll be the fourth Tuesday of the month, January the 26th, and you can register. I'm going to put the direct link for registration into the chat right now. On behalf of the UK Alumni Association, the UK Fayette County Cooperative Extension Service, and UK HR SEPS Temporary Employment, thank you so much for logging into Job Club today. We wish you all the best, and we hope to see you again in a future session. Bye-bye.